Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to prepare a custom shape for print with bleed and trim marks for a professional printer in Adobe Illustrator. So this is an example of a sticker where I've blended this rounded hexagon with this banner and we need to prepare it for print with bleed. As you can see I do have a white border so I'm going to start with just a shape showing a background and then we'll hop into this one. So let's start this first shape with a circle and let's say it has a background and let's say this this circle is where we want the trim to be and we need this to have a 0.125 inch bleed for the printer. So we're going to go to object, path, offset path, and we can give this a very specific offset, which will be our bleed. So now we've got our bleed and in your layers panel, currently working with one layer, you can create another layer and a trim layer. Let's call this first layer art. And this outer layer is the extra background. So when the printer trims around the inner circle, they're going to get that background. It's not going to have any white offset accidentally if they don't trim it exactly. So here is the trim. Once you've selected the object, over here in your layers panel, if you don't see that, go to window, layers. Once you have an object selected, you can drag the highlighted object into a new layer. So that is our trim. I'm going to change that to a cyan stroke and no fill. Go back to layers. Let's lock that layer. And then for the bleed, we can drag that into the bleed layer and technically that's my art right now I'm going to copy and make sure I have an object in the art layer as well select your bleed and let's do a magenta stroke and no fill and we can lock that and then you will want this to be on your artboard. I'm just creating it so you can see how to do that. But what I've done is just given them a guide on this. Again, I have my bleed trim layers locked. And I've given them a little bit of a key so they know where the trim is. Next, let's focus on this more complex shape. When working with custom shapes, it's good practice to keep copies of your working shapes until the design is final for print. So let's go ahead and take a copy of this option, shift, and drag it off the artboard. You can save it as its own separate file. I do want the white border to be around this banner shape as well. I've just got a drop shadow so they can see kind of a mock-up. So this would would be an example I showed them for what the sticker would look like. This one doesn't have the banner on it, but it's okay. So here is my banner object that I have grouped. Behind it I have, I cut that, I have another copy with the stroke on it. But I'm going to show you how to merge these objects. So let's say I don't have this banner image with the border around it. We need to create that. If we copy our banner, Command C or Control C on a PC, Command F, which is paste in place, we're going to go to Type, Create Outline, so the text is paths. Going to go to Object, Expand Appearance, Object, Expand. 
And again, we're creating the background of this banner shape. So we're going to go to Pathfinder, Shape Mode, Unite to merge this. Make it white. And we're going to give it a white stroke. You can kind of see, because I have my drop shadow, that there's a weird corner coming onto the stroke. To fix that, change your stroke limit to something lower, like 3. And we're going to move this behind the other banner layer. So now we need to merge and get an offset of this entire shape of the sticker. Also, this artwork is masked, or drag it off. You can see this artwork has a clipping mask around it. I do want to remove the drop shadow from my shape since I was just using that temporarily. So we'll go to Effects, remove the drop shadow under Appearance. I'm going to lock this clipping mask with Command 2 to lock it. Select everything. Go to Object, Expand Appearance. Object, Expand. And now we have our white shape around the rounded hexagon and the banner white shape. So next go to your Pathfinder and unite these again. Send to back. Object arrange, send to back. So now we have this entire object as one. Next go to object, path, offset path, and we're going to use our same offset, 0.125. Okay. And like I did previously with the circle, this outer outline is our bleed. So I'm going to make a new layer, which I already did since I'm in the same file. Let's move the selected object to the bleed and I don't need the fill anymore so I'm going to make that a magenta and you can make it a smaller stroke if you'd like. Lock the layer, get the other, this is the trim so this is where the sticker will be trimmed to so we have a white border still. Move that object to the trim. Again a fill isn't needed. I'm going to change that to the cyan color 0.25 stroke and lock that layer. If you want to add the key, you can add it on its respective layer. So I'm drawing a line with the pipe character, sample the cyan, and then with the type tool, have our bleed. So we can save this as an, a working EPS, an AI, and or a PDF and the printer will be able to work with that and create their die for this. And sometimes you want to back save to something like CS6. And before you send this off, I would save a copy and delete everything else off the artboards so they don't get confused. If this video helped you out, please like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching!